Hey, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today and listening to me share my thoughts and opinions and feelings and truth with you all. It does mean a lot to me that people reach out and that people are willing to listen and it's really nice. And that's something that I don't take lightly. It's something that I don't take for granted. And, um, you know, some of my videos can be very heavy and very hardcore, but for me, they're not. Like for me, I'm just sharing, um, you know, my life and the conclusions that I've gotten to. So I want to keep this one really tight and I'm going to jump straight into it. So I think we should just get stuck into the topic at hand. And this is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long, long time. It's something that is very, very close to my heart. And I'm going to be vulnerable in this in this video because I think when I'm vulnerable, it encourages other people to be vulnerable. And we can't really have connection without vulnerability. You know, if we just close up and we're just um, stonewalling each other all the time and never really sharing anything that is truthful, then we're just interacting with each other as like a wall between us all. We're interacting with each other as a character. And I think society in general kind of, um, you know, we're kind of taught to interact from this kind of projection of how we want society to see us and how we want to be received. And I, un hey, hey, I understand it. I get it. You know, I, I understand it. But at, hey, at least I'm willing to talk about it. Because the truth of it is you and me and all of us, we are humans. <laughs> that means we are a socially interdependent species. Okay. And that means that our lives are based on relationships. Okay. Life is relationships. Okay. Get that and get that good. It's your relationship with yourself. It's your relationship with your mum. It's a relationship with your friends. It's the relationship with your romantic partner. It is the relationship with that person that you might be seeing, like in whatever capacity, the quality of relationships that you have is the quality of your life. Okay. If you could ever listen to anything I've ever said, listen to that and please understand that. All right. Because this topic today is going to be hardcore and I'm probably going to share some things with you that you're probably not going to want to hear. You're probably going to shy away or you might freak out, but I beg you to reconsider. I can't hurt you if it's not true. Okay. And as I always say in all my videos, and it's become like a little mantra, you cannot sustain something that is not real. But what is happening now in society is that the perception of reality, the perception, the very fabric of the DNA of a human of what we are is now really just very ambiguous. There isn't any real consensus on biology. There is no consensus on reality. And our own narcissism can override this. And this is something that is very, very prevalent. And it is super disturbing to me. It is toxic to me. Okay, it's cancerous. And as this sickness spreads through society, and of course, it's always happening around America. As we know, that's where, you know, a lot of it is. God, <laughs> God bless you Americans. Oh my God. But the truth of it is you're like the epicenter where everyone like, you know, the Western culture is idolized by Americanism or by America, the American United States. So I don't want to go too far off a tangent. Um, but the problem is if up can be down and down can be up and left can be right and, um, now we can get off the hook of doing anything we want to another human being and we just get away with it because I had a mental problem. I wasn't in a right state of mind when I committed that crime, when I murdered that person or when I raped that person and now I can get away with it because it wasn't me. It was you. Own it. Own your behavior. Own the world that you're living in. Look around. Get. I want you to get real with this. 
Get real with, be serious about your life. Take ownership for yourself. Okay, I know I'm getting heavy straight away, but I can't help it. I can feel that fire coming through, that passion. Okay. So the topic at hand that I wanted to look at is ghosting. And I'm a strong person. You know, some people would look like I get messages or people look at me and go, They're like you're so you're so put, well put together or you you seem so strong or you seem so sure of yourself or you seem so um in your power. Like, yeah, I am a lot of the time, but a lot of the other time I'm absolutely just as weak as a little kitten. A lot of the time I'm just like a baby on the side of the road in a fucking bassinet. I'm completely helpless. I'm both. I can be strong and I can be weak. And so can you. We all can be. Why? Because humans, yet again, how the world sees you is also how you see yourself. These two play like they go hand in hand and they're interacting with us as we're going through this experience of life. Okay? So the quality of the way people treat us is also how we treat others. It's also how we see the value of ourself. And this is something that's really um, shifting as we are heading more into our main mode of operation in terms of ghosting the topic at hand today is that we've gone so far and we're continuing to go so far into, shall we say, the ether of the internet that most of our relationships are not really ever structurally made in real life. So there's this blurring of reality between meeting someone in the real world and then interacting with someone on a computer screen, on an app, on your phone. Because back in the day, you know, building into the today's topic of ghosting is that back in the day, you would have to go out to a bar You'd have to meet someone, you'd have to be introduced or you might have to introduce yourself and you'd see the person standing before you, okay? You couldn't pretend to not be there because you were physically there. So there were these kind of manners and graces that we used to abide by and still do to some capacity depending on where you are in the world where we had to do the cold approach where you had to, oh, love your shirt. Hey, love your hair. You know, what do you do with yourself? You know, hi, my name's da-da-da-da-da. And so that's how it tended to be. But now that we've gone into this ether of the internet is that we are fragmented. We're not connected to other people. We're not really present with them. Therefore, we can... Basically, what we have gone into now is this kind of disposable culture where everyone is just disposable. Everyone is just replaceable. And until a better option comes along... I just want to be in this kind of like ambiguous state where I don't really define my relationship with you. And then at any moment, I'll just basically abandon you. And this is something that I've dealt with a lot in my life is I I personally being honest with you, I have a lot of abandonment issues. You know, I've had a lot, like a lot, if not most of the dynamics of my relationships have been attachment and abandonment style relationships. So people coming in, love bombing me, uh, you know, I want to build a relationship with you. Um, and then all of a sudden, flick of a switch, they disappear. Flick of a switch, I never hear from them again. I'm totally sure that if you're listening to me in this video that you would have already been ghosted many times before. And someone like we need to talk about this. Okay. We need to talk about this because it's becoming so normalized now. And that, that is, it's, it's really, really terrifying because we're not placing value in other people. We're not placing value really in the need or the want to even build a relationship with someone that is safe, that is secure, that is healthy, that is stable. We tend to not want to define things. Therefore, we always can get off the hook of having to take accountability for 
if we say we change our mind or if we see that it may not work out in that future destiny of that relationship. We want to just kind of be able to easily just walk away from another person and not have to deal with the aftermath of just being honest with them. You know, that's kind of where it's gone to this. This is where society is heading. That's why I feel that this is the most important video that I've ever done and probably will ever do. Because if we don't place value, like basically I'm going to put it really bluntly like this. If you're not pursuing relationships, what the fuck are you doing? If I'll say it again. If you're not pursuing relationships, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing in your life? Life is relationships. If you're not committed to some level of self-improvement with your own relationship with yourself, then every, it, everything is a complete waste of time. Everything. It's a complete waste of time. Okay, so I would like to think that if people are listening to my video, then maybe you are committed to some level of self-improvement. Maybe you've come into the spiritual realm and you're looking for truth, just as I am too. But we have to be honest with ourselves. We all have work to do. So whether it's you in relation to the ghosting topic at hand today, whether it's you that has done the ghosting or you're the ghostee, I'm not, I don't want to pass judgment in this video, but I can't help it. It is the cruelest thing that you can do to another human being. It places shame on the other person. It places this, it's basically a passive aggressive power move because in a relationship, we need the two parties to have a relationship. It takes two. Okay. So to have a relationship, it takes two. So basically the one that can leave the relationship dynamic is the one who holds the power. The one who can just walk away, walk out the door and pull their affection away from the other person is the person that holds the power of the relationship. So if you've developed a, like a dynamic of relationship connection where you can just walk out the door at any second, A, that's really bad for you because it shows lack of emotional maturity and B, it's very damaging, very, very, very damaging to the other party, okay? So if you don't know what the term ghosting is, let's just rewind. <laughs> I'm just going to rewind back to the, to the point of it. Ghosting is this really awkward and um, upsetting way of a breakup. Quit essentially, that's what it is. It's just someone who just chooses to just disappear without a word, without goodbye, without leave, nothing. They just terminate the relationship and they sever all communications, ending all the communications really abruptly. And um, I believe that ghosting is more painful when you've probably had sex with that person and they just leave without ex explanation because you feel that you've given a part of yourself up to that person. You've opened up your body. You've opened up your soul, your heart to that person. And now when they just leave you abruptly without any explanation, you probably, you're just like, I mean, you're like, what, what it, was it me? Was I not good enough? Um, did I do something wrong? I, I, and what happens here is it's very, very upsetting because it creates so much trauma I believe ghosting is actually anything to do with the human psyche leaving someone in a state of unknowing is the cruelest thing you can actually do to a human being. I actually see ghosting as more detrimental and dangerous to another human being's well-being than like severing off an arm or cutting off their leg because at least it's done. They know what happened. It's taken place. But when you leave someone in a state of unknowingness and you just, they, 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 they can't improve and they don't have any closure. So you might just be able to, and by the way, we, when we're talking about this ghosting behavior, we are talking about psychopathic, narcissistic, sociopathic, pathological liars, pathological tendencies to begin with. But I believe that's why I'm talking about this now is that it's more prevalent with those types of personalities that would do the ghosting because societies become more 
um, like uh, there's more pathological behavior than ever before because it's kind of encouraged in a way. So yeah, if say for example, the ghost, the ghost uh, just off they go, they've wiped you out of mind, out of sight. They don't respond to your messages. They probably blocked you. And then they just skip on into the next relationship and skip on to the next. And probably, you know, in today's society, they probably have three or four, maybe one or two, you know, other people going on the side at one time. That's, yeah, yeah, that's how it tends to work now. Um, is that you're still back where you were with them, but yet they've moved on. And this creates such confusion because you don't, it's like putting someone in a room and turning off the light and shutting the door and the door's locked. They go mad. I go mad. They go mad. We all go relatively slightly insane because we're trying to, you have to, the, the person who's being ghosted has to come up with some kind of explanation and tries to go with the most logical explanation as to why the other person did it to them. And that, that causes them more trauma, just sitting in the unknowing and having that swirling around in their head all the time, every day on a loop without knowing what the fuck happened. And we need to know. We need to know. Because when we are able to understand something, we're able to process that, then we can give an assigned meaning to that. Now we can move on. But you can't move on when someone's left you in a state of abandonment. You know they've abandoned you. You know that. Obviously, it's been a couple of weeks, a couple of months. They haven't responded. It's pretty safe to say they left you on red. You know that they've seen your messages, but they are making a choice to not respond to you. Now, there are different stages to ghosting. So let's. I want to get this on the table right now. Um, if this is the situation where you're in a violent relationship and I live in Australia and one in five relationships are domestically, physically violent. So like, <laughs> isn't that just disgusting? Like how fucked up is that? One in five relationships in Australia, in my country, is domestically violent. All right. So if you're in a domestically violent relationship dynamic and you're planning on doing like getting out in the night getting your kids out in the night, trying to find a way to survive, going into crisis accommodation. That's not ghosting. That's survival, all right? That's not what I'm talking about here. In some cases, you have to plan and plot to actually get away from a toxic relationship dynamic. So ghosting, I would even be annoyed and disturbed that someone would even consider that ghosting. That's not ghosting. Okay. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here is someone who has taken the time to show you that they're wanting to connect with you. They want to build a connection with you. They place value in you. You've been intimate with them on some level, physically, spiritually, mentally, dot, dot, dot. Intimacy takes on many different meanings. doesn't matter. It, I don't care what it is. What it means is that someone's come in, given you this promise of a future, given you the promise and the prospect of a connection that they value you. And you might have been vulnerable. You might have shared some of the other things that other people had done to you that had hurt you. And then they're the one that hurts you. They're the one that does the thing that they said they wouldn't do. So this for me is where I'm at. And it just creates these scars. They're just there every day. And I, Hey, Hey, I understand that part of the human spectrum of experiences is that most of the experiences we have are painful. Most of them are shitty. Most of them are upsetting. Okay. I get that. I understand that. It was probably when I look at it from a high point of view, like a bird's eye view in my way is that I would say a big part of the reason that the person ghosted you is because they don't want to deal with the conflict of life. They don't want to deal with the conflict or potential conflict that they may have felt that they would have got with you had they been honest with you. And I understand that, but it's still no excuse. It's really, really not. So, and I think to myself, maybe this is a millennial thing. Maybe it is a Generation Z thing. Like who knows what it is? But for the most part, ghosting or whatever you might associate this behavior with, it's been around for a long, long time. 
You know, it could have just been as simple as someone ceasing sending letters. Um, you know, and there's so many variables to it. You know, obviously, if they live in a different part of the world, you know, have you had sex with them? By the way, having sex with someone does change the dynamic because as I found through my study in the occult and my study with psychology is that when two people come together and share a physical, physical, like when I say physical, I mean like physical fuck or a physical act of connection. It is more of an act of fortifying the relationship dynamic. So it's something that um, is harder to break. It means more because you've invested that personal experience with someone. Just chatting to someone online, um, I I don't like. I, I'm going to be real, really honest with you. So you're probably not going to like to hear this, but bear in mind this is my my point of view. Humans need connection. All right. So I'm going to look at the concept of ghosting from like the TV show um, Catfish, for example. We're all competing with each other for limited resource, and we all have the option of. Um, dating someone else or being more interested in someone else if someone else comes along. But if we don't, if we don't, if we're in a state where we're not exclusive with somebody, then we don't have to take any accountability for um, the time that someone else comes along and I can just abandon the other person because a better deal, a better option came along. And this is something that's tied into technology as well, particularly around like phones, um, electronical devices, things like that, is that buy it, get it, upgrade it, buy it, get it, upgrade it. And humans are hypergamous by nature. So I've talked about this a lot. So we're, we're always looking for the best deal. We're looking for the, the better option, the BBD, the bigger, better deal. That's how humans are conditioned. And you're not going to fight that because it's biology. It's wired into our biology. In nature, an animal isn't going to go for the old fat, sick one. They're going to go for the alpha. They're going to be attracted to the one that can provide or show the higher, highest probability of success with that partner. So they're going to go for the provider, the hunter. They're going to go for the younger model. When I say model, I know that's a hard word to say, but I'm, I'm using the word model or term. You could take that literally or metaphysically, whichever you prefer. Same as with a car. It doesn't matter. It's just how we are hardwired. And people say, oh, you're judging me. Yes, I'm judging you. Everyone's judging everyone. We all do. We're all judging each other because we're all weighing up our own value compared to their value. This is something that I don't see people talk about quite often and it's something that's come up quite a lot around amongst red pill men or men that identify as red pill. Uh, it's a very powerful movement that's been evolving over the past 18, no, sorry, eight to nine years, I would say, is that people that are able to understand this, recognize this, and not be an asshole about it, but just understand that that's, that's what it is. Sexual marketplace value, SMV, sexual marketplace value. We're all assessing each other based off their value to our value and then predetermining the potential relationship connection to that person. This is also known as determinism and it's something that comes along um, quite heavily when we think, when I think about the word ghosting, say, for example, if someone had like a very, um, fixed point of view in terms of looking at how their relationships are, um, it's either going to work or it's not, that's how it is. That that's a very fixed point of view. So they'd come along, they'd say, no, nah, really not that into this person move along. Okay. By the way, there's nothing wrong with breaking up with someone. There's nothing wrong with telling your truth, but not telling your truth and just leaving the other person. That's not okay. That's what I want to make this really clear in the video. Ghosting is not the way. It's not. It is not the way. Okay. I don't care what, like whatever stance you have on this, it's not the way. Whether you've done the ghosting or whether you've been the one who's been ghosted, it doesn't matter. We have to be willing to place value in relationship dynamics. We just do. 
So one way of looking at it would be black or white, fixed relationship, looking at it, it's either it's going to work or it's not, we're compatible or we're not. That's fair. Yep. And then the other side of it would be more of a destiny approach where it's like, well, if it's going to work out, then it's meant to be. Whatever it was meant to be is meant to be. Okay. Look, both, both are an approach that people would generally take. But the people that would tend to get less hurt with the ghosting would be the destiny approach where it's like, oh, well, it wasn't meant to be. Um, I'll just write off my feelings. But sometimes you can't write off your feelings and just switch, just click your fingers and just switch off your emotions. Humans don't work that way. We have, we're very complicated. We have fundamental belief systems within us that show us how we look at the world. And it doesn't matter which, which outcome or which way you look at that. Everyone's interacting with each other from their own kind of like pyramid, their own little psych, like everyone's interacting with each other from their own little world and their own lens. Yeah. I hope I'm not getting too meta with you in this chat. I really don't um, because I don't want to be, I don't want to come, I just want to be honest with how I feel about this. So um, yeah, I would say I've been through a lot and I'll share something with you. I mean, I've been yeah, I mean, yeah, I've, I've gone to therapy, I've gone to counselors, I've gone to psychologists, I've gone to psychiatrists. Um, and all of it was a, most of it for me, for me was a complete waste of time. My life has been so crazy. The stories and the characters and the trauma that I've gone through, some people don't even believe me. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And someday I'd, yeah, some days I just wake up and I don't even know whether it was real or not. Like that's how crazy it, that I don't I don't know how a how I got through it, and b I don't. I think I've become naturally very withdrawn from people in general now because I'm just used to um, normalized dysfunction, and I'm used to. Yeah, just monsters, really. I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm used to, and uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm damaged in that way, but I'm not. I don't like the word damaged, but yeah, I mean, we we carry these wounds with us, you know, we really do, no matter what you've been through. Um, but out of all of the things that I've been through, I mean, I've been gang raped, I've been raped, I've been, you know, family members have been like, there's just so much shit going on in my life. Um that one. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to say on this video cause it might get taken down. Um, I did get a warning from one of my other videos a couple of months ago, um, on here on YouTube. So I don't know how much truth I'm allowed to say in my own experiences, but the thing that one thing that really, really mentally fucked me up and it still has to this day was a ghosting. And that ghosting occurred in 2015. And it was just really surreal because when you trust someone enough to tell them that these are the things that I've been through and you actively look them in the eye and you say, please just don't hurt me. Like if you're not into me, just tell me. Like I understand. I totally get it. If like, hey, I totally get it. If you're not into me, just let me know. And that's fine. I under I understand and I will move on from that. And I get it. But just to just leave someone hanging after love bombing them, when you're doing that to a person that's already quite damaged, that's already quite unstable that isn't supported and doesn't feel secure you to, to the, to the ghoster, it, it's just like, Oh, well, another person I'm just abandoning, who cares? I don't have to do with the aftermath of how I made them feel. Ha <laughs> ha That's why I'm doing it to the other person, to the person who's being ghosted. I mean, I'm, I was suicidal. I, I was suicidal and here I am six years later still replaying that in my head because I'm stuck back in that moment where I was trapped in that space. That's really, really fucking unhealthy. I have enough common sense to know that that is wrong. I shouldn't be holding on to that. But the promise of that potential, which is a connection that I hardly ever get to just be switched off. 
it, it, you just don't know. And, and, and if you're a spiritual person like myself and you're into the occult and you're into witchcraft and you're into tarot and you're into magic and you're into the arts and you're an artisan, well, then you're probably going to have more of this than anyone else. Let's get real. You're probably the black sheep of the family. You probably completely looked at like a complete lunatic. So we already are, we already kind of are like kind of privy and kind of almost expecting that we would be ghosted, which is fucked. That's crazy, but that's what it is. That's what it is. So to have someone come along and do that, it, it, it's just so damaging because there's no explanation. There's nothing that I can work on. There's nothing that you can work on. It's like, hey, how do I improve so I can ensure that this doesn't happen to me again? What was it about me that like, did you, obviously the person's peeked into a window of you that saw something they didn't like. And rather than say it and be truthful and tell the truth, oh, well, I'll just pretend they never existed. You're left hanging. Now, I have severed relationships with people. Um, and I do all oh, quite a lot. First of all, I'm not into chit chat every day. How are you? What are you doing? I'm up to like, I don't give a fuck. I don't have time. And I don't care. I'm not that type of person that's going to be available at someone else's whim every second of the day. That is not realistic. That's actually not healthy either. So I'm very careful about the time and energy that I place into my connections with other people. And I understand when I message them and they don't reply for a week or so, that's because they're busy. That's because they're living life. I'm not that needy. And you shouldn't be either. That's not healthy except that they've got a lot going on. We've got to understand here that technology is changing the way relationships work. And fundamentally, if we don't place value in a connection, then we aren't really placing value in each other. And this is where society, where I'm getting back to that thing where there's no consensus on reality, this is where society will begin to collapse. This is where society will begin to slowly collapse. Okay, because... I don't know how to tell someone else that you need to care about other humans. I don't, I mean, how the fuck do you even, even the mere thought that I'd even have to say that, just to say that out loud is so insane, but that's what it's come to. That's what it's come to. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, ghosting isn't a way for someone to avoid the consequence of engaging with you. And if they might perceive you as a person that never listens and you're just a person that never, like basically simply invalidates everything that they say, then they see that, then they perceive you to be unworkable. And because of that perception of that unworkability, they're, they're simply just going to choose to not engage with you and then they just vanish off the face of the earth. And I understand that I have a person or I have people in my life that if I was to actually come up to them and say, this is why the relationship really isn't stable or safe and they don't listen, well, then you feel like, what's the point? I understand that. But at least I would have the balls to make the point. At least I would have the balls to just say, these are the reasons and I'm going to tell you because I need you to understand whether you perceive this or not, that I've made the attempt to let you know that I don't feel that you're approachable. I can't be honest with you. I can't tell the truth with you. And, and whether that it does involve like a ping pong chat of like, da, 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 and they stonewall you and they completely, you know, no, don't, don't care how you feel. It's all about how I feel. Well, that would only re reiterate why I'm leaving the dynamic of that connection anyway, because they're not listening to you. It, you need to, you need to, for a relationship to be secure. And that's hard these days because most relationship dynamics are kind of like open, like an open relationship. Like what the fuck is that? We've got to get over this departmentalization of the human soul and the human psyche. And this tends to happen quite a lot now. And I don't care whether it's in the heterosexual world, whether it's in the gay world. I don't give a fuck what world it's in. Yes, there are levels to society. Yes, there is a pecking order and a, and a wheel to society and it's, and it's the way that it's based. 
So I'll just be really blunt and I'll get into my Sagittarian side and just like, here's the truth. This is it. Whether you don't like it or not, it's happening. The world that you live in is based on youth, wealth, race, beauty, social status. Repeat that again. Five, the five keys that make this world operate, whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, and I don't, but that's the truth. Youth, wealth, race, beauty, social status. These five things make the world go round. And where you fit into these paradigms is going to be very conjurative to the type of life that you actually live here, whether you like that or not. There is a hierarchical order to society and humans or people, we're all one. We're all using each other to get needs met, whether we like it or not. That's what we're doing. So you've got straight white men at the top, probably got gay men underneath that. Oh, sorry, probably straight white men. Then you probably have white women, black women. It goes down. I'm going to, this is being honest. I'm being honest here, guys. I'm being serious here. Then you've got gays. Then you've got trans, trans, trans down the bottom. Like there is a pecking order here. And so straight men use gay men for sex because gay men represent the part of them that they will never own. So this relationship dynamic would be prone to ghosting because the other party isn't actually even admitting their connection to the lower socioeconomic person that they're using. Then they can discard them. And also the thing is, is that when they're getting a little bit more esoteric rather than getting factual here now, I'm going into that mode, is that we do this and we get away with it. Okay, this is where society is at now. This is where it's going now. And this is why, quite frankly, it will be the undoing of the human race. It will be. It already, it's already set in motion. <sighs> so as we're, it, the law of attraction and this pirate paradigm is one, is that it's fractals of source all expressing themselves in different ways, but we're all connected. So you can't hurt someone else without hurting a part of you. You can't, push so- you can't punch something without punching and hurting your hand too. It goes both ways. Right. What I know that sounds heavy to understand. I think some of you might be able to understand what I'm saying here. I hope. Oh fuck. I hope you can. I. Oh, I really. I really, really hope that you can understand what I'm saying here. So, the part. Say. Say. Like back to that example that I gave you before. When it goes to like, I'm getting heavy here. I know. I'm sorry. I'm getting heavy, but it. <sighs> the part of the the gay man represents the part of the straight man that the get that the straight man doesn't want to own so does this make sense so yeah i i don't want to go too hardcore on that but what i'm saying is ghosting is very complex because it's got it's layered with socioeconomical um cultural values we're talking about values here guys Okay, and they are tied into cultures as well. I know they are like there's arranged marriages in a lot of countries these days where a child is born and then they're basically sold. Like that's the world that we're living in here, you know. Sometimes we have to get real with this and look at this for what it is and be and be willing to talk about it and understand it so we can unpack it because whether you like it or not, that's the mode that we're operating in. And that's why ghosting is becoming more and more normalized, particularly in the Western society, Western culture, okay? That's why I wanted to... And basically, it is a form of abuse. It is. Ghosting is a form of emotional abuse. And it, it's more dangerous because it, it destroys the other person's sense of um, value. Ghosting destroys the other person's sense of worth. And that's where it gets really, really unbelievably painful because we're all, we need to have, we need to have some level of self-esteem to get up and go to work and just exist every day. But to have yourself, have your esteem completely disinvalued, that is where people start to really collapse. So yeah, so there's it is a passive aggressive move. Ghosting is a tactic of a way for basically punishment and it's very, very cruel. It's like having um, the best way to describe it. And I've met families. Uh, I had a couple of clients come here and there when I was doing my readings full time. 
and uh, um, yeah, this is getting really, I'm getting emotional now, but um, they'd come to me. I had a woman coming who had her daughter had, had been missing and her daughter had been missing for over nine years. And I remember as I was doing the reading for her and we were talking about the whole situation, she already had come to terms with the fact that her daughter is dead. She knew that. What she wanted was closure. She wanted to know what happened to her, what happened to her daughter. It's, it's not the suffering of knowing that she's dead. It's the waiting game. That's the thing that tortures people the most. Like I can take punishment. I can. You know, I was bullied to the shit house by groups of kids at school, by adults, by life, managers, life, da 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 I know that that's going to happen. I'm not that naive to life. I understand how humans work. I understand psychology. I get it. It's the waiting for the punch. It's the not knowing when it's coming. It's the not knowing what happened. Where is the, my child's body? What did I, like, what is it? What is it about me that I did wrong? Because there's nothing that we can do with that. We have to just go with the most logical conclusion, but it's not confirmed. And that makes us go crazy. It makes us go into this state of basically self-destruction. And then it, it doesn't reinforce connection to us because no one reinforced connection to us to begin with. And then we just feel powerless. And that's kind of what it feels like. But yeah, for some people, ghosting is a form of control and they're emotionally not mature enough to hold a real relationship. Um, now, I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't actually see open relationships as real relationships. Okay, now you can get really upset with me and, and I'd love to hear your comments below. That's fine. Write what would you like, whatever you'd like to write down below in the comments section. More than happy to read it. Not a problem. I may even respond. Um, but to me in my life, and it's my truth is that the only person who's fucking my partner is me. If they're sharing, like we've got to get over this back to that separation thing. We can't have this way of this mode of operation where we're like, I've got my love life and then I've got my sex life and they're both separate. No, they're not. You can't departmentalize a person like that because what it's doing, it's going to get you off the hook of having to take any ownership for it. And you can't predetermine connection because we're, why? Because we're hypergamous. Humans, are, if a better option comes along than the one you're with, bye, see ya. <laughs> we're, talking about, <laughs> we're talking about ghosting here. This is value systems here. Like, what are you going to do? Come home from work? Like, hey, how many guys fucked you today? Did they fuck you better than me? Like, how many STIs did you pick up today? You know, <laughs> like, get, I want you to get real with this. Are you in a relationship? If you are right now listening to this, are you in a relationship based on convenience? Are you in a relationship based on survival and a dual income? that you couldn't otherwise obtain with that other person to pay the rent or the mortgage than you are about really fucking loving them. Get real with this. I know I'm getting aggressive now, but I'm being honest. Be honest with yourself. Tell the truth. It's because we don't tell the truth to another person that we hurt them. And then that hurt person hurts other people. It's like a domino effect. Everything is connected especially with relationships. One, it's like standing in a line. A really good example was an interview that I was watching with an actor called Tobin Bell, who was the Jigsaw killer, the actor who played the Jigsaw in um, the Saw franchise. You may know him. Really, really talented actor. He said something to me which stayed with me and I was listening to this many years ago. I think it was like Saw 3 when it came out was that when in society, if one person pushes one person forward in a line, the next person pushes that person and the next person and the next person, and it all becomes a knock-on effect. And if that knock-on effect becomes um, like on a, on a global level of consciousness, then we have very serious problem. We have to be willing to place value in other people. 
And I'm not talking about someone who enjoys being debased for sexual gratification and their source of pleasure is being used by someone else. We're not talking about that. We're talking about building a safe, solid relationship with someone that won't just walk out the door on you any second. But if we don't have to define it, then we, they can always get off the hook. This is what I call off the hook behavior. This is the thing. You don't get to have it both ways. You don't get to have it both ways. It doesn't work like that. It might in the movies or on TV, but in reality, it's not safe and it's not real. So confront yourself. Now, in some cases with with ghosting, my thoughts on it would be also that my advice would be if it's really bothering you that much, reach out. But in order to do that, you would have to say to them in a way where it's like, I don't, I don't want to get mad. I don't, I'm, you don't have to take off any accountability from that other person to begin with for, if, based on your reaction of what they tell you. That's if they choose to tell you the truth. Probably they won't. But if they do, at least you made that reach out. So, so you're like, hey, look, I've noticed you're not communicating with me anymore. I know you've cut me off. Um, can I just ask why? You know, I promise I won't get mad. I promise I won't. Like, I just need to know why so that I can embed myself and that I can move on. Now, if they respond, you've got to make it super safe for them to not get uncomfortable because it's because their lack of being pussy, like basically they're pussy, you know, they're weak as piss because they're not willing to tell the truth with you. They're not will- They're playing an illusion with you, a game. And I can assure you that relationship dynamics at some point, like we're not going to live for 500 years. We don't have time for this shit. We don't have time to play games with people. Don't fuck around with other people. So you might think life's a joke, but for some people, life's not a joke. This meant something to them. So if you can't find it with like, just find it within yourself to just give them an answer. If you're the one who did the ghosting, just say, look, I didn't think we were compatible. These are a few of the things that came up for me. Just leave it at that. Hey, look, that's all you've got to do. That's all you've got to do is give them an example of why it wouldn't work for you. Tell them why. Was there someone else? Are you just happy being single? That's fine. But tell the truth. We've got to be willing to tell the truth and take responsibility for that, just that level of awareness of how you're received by other people. Now, if you reach out to them in that communication and there is no contact back, accept it. A appropriate amount of time has gone by and you're like, okay, I didn't get a response back and I just accept that. I'm not going to go to their house. I'm not going to email them. I'm not going to text them. I'm not going to show up. I'm just going to let it go and know that and you maintain your own level of self-respect. That's the rule of thumb here. You know, maintain that level of self-respect and just be like, okay, they weren't emotionally mature enough because that's fundamentally what ghosting is. It's someone that isn't emotionally mature enough. It's basically saying in a way, in a way without words is that I'm not, I'm not dating material. I'm not friendship material for you because I'm displaying that I can just disappear and abandon you at any second. That's not going to create safety for the other person. Same thing with the open relationship. It's not safe on any level, especially like physiologically STI levels. It's not safe. Not with the level of STIs that are out there these days. It's not. So you have to get really real with yourself. So if you've ghosted someone and you're listening to this, I hope I've explained it to you from my heart. I really have tried to make it really, really obvious here just reach out to them and let them know why they deserve to know. Just let them know. And then give that, let them have that little bit of peace. Okay. Because ghosting, a lot of psychologists would be like, a lot of experts would be like, ghosting has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the ghost. Nah, nah, nah. That's not true either. No, it's not. No, I've met people that are just so lackluster, so powerless and so pathetic and stupid and just 
naive and immature that I, I mean, I couldn't, <laughs> like, there's just no way I could build anything with you. You have nothing, A, you've got nothing here of value that I see to offer me in a relationship to begin with. So I just pull away and I didn't fuck them. I didn't date them. I never met them. I don't have to tell them that. I just, yeah, just two ships sailing in the ocean. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about in this video is that you've built the connection. You've taken the time. You've done the deed. You've had the sex. You've dated. You've courted. You've invested that time. You've love bombed them. And now you've, that, that's where I've got a problem. That's where the problem is. Do you want someone to do that to you? Would you want someone to do that to your sister or your brother or your father or your mother? No, no one wants this. That's the problem here. All right. So we've got to, I know this has been heavy, but it is what it is. Like I'm a heavy person. Take responsibility. Ghosting is just a, re, it's a dysfunctional relationship pattern. And it's highly probable that the person that's doing the ghosting, this is their attachment style. They just go on to the next, on to the next, ghost the next, ghost the next, ghost the next. But the problem is they're not able to build relationships with people that can actually be 100% safe, that can actually be secure, you know? So I believe that since technology has come along, people don't have to do anything that makes them feel uncomfortable. So it's like having an uncomfortable chat. Oh, well, I'll just avoid the conversation because it makes me feel yucky. It makes me feel life's uncomfortable. Life is complicated. Love is complicated. Human dynamics are complicated. They're behavioral. Like humans are complex beings. That's what we are. But we are relationship-based beings. Okay, we just are. And so that's what it is. I'm looking to develop a potential healthy, stable relationship where someone has the maturity and capacity to actually have a, a direct line of communication with me. So if I did something wrong, if I said something, tell me. I'll tell you if you tell me. That's how we can actually build something that's of value. But if you just reduce another human being to just a body part and use them and discard them, you're just going to create these short, sharp relationships that go nowhere fast. And then you're on to the next and then you're on to the next. And we don't like at some point, you like I'm 36 now. Who the fuck has time for this shit? All right. So it, it's, it's debasing another person for gaining control. It only shows a lack of control that you had to begin with. And that's what I, I can't put that in any other way other than that. And the universe doesn't want that. You're better than that. God, if God existed, I believe God doesn't exist. God is existence. But if God existed, God doesn't want that. You can do better than that. And you know it. You know it. So just reinforcing these kind of intermittent relationship dynamics where it's like weakness, emotional abandonment, attached emotional abandonment. <sighs> I've been in emotional starvation for a long time. I'm a smart cookie, all right? And so I find it really, really hard to find someone that can intellectually understand me, keep up with me and receive me. And generally I'm completely discarded because I'm just too like, dude, you're like too out there. You're too full on, but that's just who I am. So do I have to play down and be a character for you to make it easier for you? No, I'm not. So when a connection comes along and I see potential in it and I see that it could happen, plus I am psychic, I'm a medium, so I'm privy to like, let's put it in the nicest way and I'm keeping this humble. I'm more privy to things that others are not, like I just am. But that doesn't make me more, you know, it, that's not a power trip thing. It, it actually makes it harder to go through life like this. I think a lot of people can tell that about me already. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, if you're doing, if you've been ghosted in a lot of ways, I know you probably heard you've dodged a bullet. Maybe you have, but this video came from my heart. I think I'm going to leave it here. What are we at? 52 minutes. So it's a lot to process in this video. I hope that you found it insightful. I hope that you've been able to relate to it, whether you're the one that's ghosted someone or you're the one who's being ghosted. Um, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. But as you can tell, this has been a really, um, a really heavy video for me to talk about. And 
yeah, I've laid out my truth here. This is my truth. This is how I feel. You can totally disagree. Of course, you are within your rights to absolutely, but this is how I feel about it. And it's something that we need to deal with relationships, like the value, valuing other human beings is the predecessor to the human survival. Like we need each other. So treating each other like an object that I can just click a block button and they just never existed. The other person on the other end of the line has a whole range and spectrum of emotions. They're a human being. Humans are not robots, okay? So get out of this dynamic. Catch yourself if you've gone into it. If you're in some kind of dysfunctional, ridiculous relationship that is based on survival and it's not based on love, get real with this. Okay, get real with yourself because it's very, very cruel to keep someone in a dynamic that isn't real. You cannot sustain something that is not real. It will collapse. That's the tower card in the tarot. All right, I hope that you found this video insightful. I'm sending you love and light and a big hug from my soul to yours. Um, And I'll just, I'll leave it here today. This was my thoughts on ghosting and I will see you in the next video I might be doing a video next on twin soul flames I'm not sure I've been asked to talk about this a few times so I might share my thoughts on that as well all right you can reach out to me via Instagram Um, it's algoliath tarot deck and uh, I do respond to dms so I will see you in the next video be well bye bye bye